Happy February, everybody! Let's take a look back at the past month of Gigafactory progress for all the Tesla sites. I'm Brian. Welcome to My Tesla Weekend. <laughs> So there's going to be two bits of news at the end of this, so stick around for those. But until then, we've got work to do, so let's get started. In Shanghai, there's nothing to see. The land is full. There's nowhere to put stuff. What you can see is that uh, production is going gangbusters, and we know the numbers are going to be good, so let's move on. In Berlin, the stamping extension is looking good. It's gone vertical and they've started opening the walls at the north end of the building to maybe remove them all. Who knows? Allow some exchange of parts and materials through this space. The entrance of the building is moving along as well. It's uh, getting a new look, and it's getting more work done. And the parking revision uh, is getting some interesting work. You've got to wonder why they're ta tearing it up. It's because they're putting in canopies, which you can tell because they're putting in pilings on which the canopies will be anchored. It's more important to have a heavy footing for things like that. The road expansion is going great. It's expanding on the other side of the highway as well. And uh, the southeast parking area is advancing along with it. The train station's footings are complete. We may expect to see construction begin on that in the next month. The 4680 building is getting its final touches. Equipment is going in. Uh, the projected start date of middle of the year seems on track. That's good. The new tanks have got some graffiti. The uh, liquid tanks that are by the factory there. Uh, they got some new decorations. Looks pretty cool. And at the north of the site, the clearing is getting more cleared. A lot of the timber has been removed. It's smoothed out. There's some temporary roads in place that will be used as soon as construction is approved and they can begin. In Texas, boy, we've got some stuff to cover. The footage is a few days out of date because a snowstorm hit and not much has happened in those few days because it's all been kind of shut down and it's hard to build when there's ice everywhere. Also, you may be concerned that it's dark Texas has not grown dark. Some of this footage was shot before dawn. The apron on the east side is getting more rework, and the main entrance uh, is getting a lot more rework into a whole new shape. It's getting a little ramp. It's getting some cyber berms. Uh, and inside, the mezzanine has been recut and is now more of the design aesthetic of the Texas property. The cathode building is done-ish. Uh, it's getting... The walls reopened a little bit in places to allow machinery to be put in. You can see a lot of equipment has gone in. The interior paint is done. This building is being outfitted. The projected date that I think it'll go into operation is right around mid-year, right around the time when the Cybertruck begins limited production, going into bigger production towards the end of the year. Next to it, there's a dye shop, which has gotten a lot more of its vertical columns, a lot more of its roof. A lot more of it's everything. We can see more still ongoing there. There's a retention pond in this area. Is that new? Did I just miss it? Hmm. The switchyard is moving along, however slowly. There's equipment that's been put in at ground level. More will be added up higher as they get ready to actually use it. The rooftop solar is done along the middle strip. It's just done. Where the logo is, it's done. They will expand above and below it to black out the rest of the roof with solar panels, uh, but that does not appear to be a high priority at this time. And the property is ramping. Production is ramping visibly. In the southwest, you can see a lot of cars that are being held for rework, additional trim pieces, who knows? The loading and logistics lots are full and busy. The site is really producing a lot of vehicles. The warehouse on wheels expansion and contractor parking, both on the west side of the highway, are being used more. They're in use. Uh, everything is always moving. It's pretty exciting. And one thing that's kind of neat to see is Joe Techmeyer managed to catch the stamping equipment going in. Uh, that means there's more capacity being added. Whatever capacity we have now, it's not the final amount. There's more capacity always being added. So that's it. That's all the factory progress. So... We've got a couple things to answer here. Uh, the first is, uh, am I going to Investor Day? 
in Texas on March 1st? And the answer is yes. I have booked my ticket. Uh, Jeff, uh, producer Jeff is going to be joining me and we're going to have some fun. Hoping to get some interviews while I'm there with the likes of uh, the people who live in that area. Maybe I'll get to meet Farzad. Maybe I'll get to meet Dave Lee. Hopefully I'll get to meet Ellie in space again. Uh, maybe that would be a fun thing to do some in-person interviews. Um, I didn't get a chance to spend much time with Brian Roshetsky or Jeff or Joe or Brad. I'd like to see all the drone pilots. I'd like to chat with them all. So it's going to be fun. And there will be an event uh, and it will be free again. And it will probably be in the same place, but we'll see. It'll be a lot smaller than the one back in April, last April, because uh, this is just investor day. This isn't the cyber rodeo, but it should be pretty exciting. And by the way, if you have a way to get me a ticket to the to the investor day, that'd be pretty awesome because oh, maybe we're going 0 for 6 on this one. That'd be that'd be something. <laughs> and by the way, hey, if you want to join the planning committee, let me know because I am looking for help with that. The other question is, the other day on Patreon, I put out a notice saying, anybody want a phone call today? And I chatted with a handful of you guys, five or six. And we had some really great conversations. And one of the things that was shared with me is that one of my patrons said, what I miss is the deep analytical stuff, stuff like this, but also the tracking of the factory progress and all that. And I'd like to see more of it. And the truth is, so would I. Um, and I will work toward that goal, but I can't do it right now because those are, as much as I love them, among my least popular videos. My very least is, is interviews with people who are not famous. But just above that would be these. So on these, they generally take something like an hour per minute of finished material. So if I'm doing a five or 10 minute, now this part at the end here, this just kind of flows. But for the produced part, with all the graphics and whatnot, for the trackers to see what's done, those take, oh my gosh, they take some time. So what kind of time are we talking about? Well, the problem is time is money. and. The most successful of those types of videos over the last few months only got a few thousand views, made 10 to $30. It's tough to put in five, six, seven hours on a video that makes 10 to $30. So um, I will work toward that, but it is not something that's happening immediately. So I did want to thank my patrons as always. I want to thank Joe and Woo Wah and Tobias Lind for use of their drone footage. As always, thank you guys so much. And uh, yeah, what did I miss? What did I misunderstand? Leave me all your thoughts, your wisdom, your juicy, blinding brilliance. And who knows? Maybe if you stay tuned, maybe if you stay juicy, I might just see you in Texas.